Hello Matrix, and welcome to the 10th video on calculus, brought to you by the Answer Series. In this video, we will look at concavity and the points of inflection. When we ask where a graph is concave up, it means where on the graph does the tangent lie below the graph. So if you look at what I've got drawn here, wherever I draw the tangent, it is always below the graph. And if that is the case, we say that that part of the graph is concave up. If we talk about where is the graph concave down, it means we want to know where on the graph does the tangent line lie above the graph. So if a graph has that shape, we talk about it being concave down. And where the concavity changes, in other words, where it changes from being concave up to concave down, or vice versa, we get a point of inflection. Now, this slide has a huge amount of information. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk quite a bit about it. And then what I suggest you do is I suggest you pause it and just have a good look and see what is happening. So what I've got is on the left-hand side, I have a cubic graph where A is positive, and I've got its derivative and its second derivative. On the right-hand side, I have exactly the same thing, but this time where the A value of the cubic graph is negative. Now if we look, first of all, my A value is positive on this cubic graph. When I take the derivative of a cubic graph, remember when we take the derivative, we subtract one from the index. So if I subtract one from the index of x cubed, I get a term in x squared. In other words, what kind of graph do I get? I get a parabola. So if my a value is positive in the cubic graph, then in the derivative, I'm going to get a parabola where my a value is positive. And when I take the derivative of a parabola that has an a value that is positive, I will get a straight line where the gradient is positive. So there's my cubic with a positive a value. There's the derivative of it. And there is the second derivative. Now, we need to notice a couple of things. Where the graph is concave down. In other words, the tangent lies above it. Notice what happens. I get a local maximum. Now, this graph goes on forever and ever, so it doesn't have a maximum value. But over here, this point is a maximum within an area of the graph. So we call it a local maximum. Now, at a local maximum, the derivative is zero. So when I draw the derivative at that point where I had a local maximum, the derivative is zero. So where I have a local maximum on the cubic, on the derivative, I get an x-intercept. In exactly the same way, when I have the graph being concave up, I get a local minimum. And the derivative at the minimum is zero. So when I draw the derivative, I get an x-intercept. So at the local minimum, I have an x-intercept on my derivative. With the point of inflection, where the graph changes from being concave down to concave up, notice what happens with my derivative. I get a turning point. So at the local maximum, the derivative has an x-intercept. At the local minimum, the derivative has an x-intercept. At the point of inflection, the derivative has a turning point. When I take the derivative of the derivative, well, here's my turning point. What's the derivative at a turning point? It's zero. So what happens with my second derivative? I get an intercept and you get your second derivative looking like that. So notice what happens. At the local maximum, my derivative is zero. At the local minimum, my derivative is zero. At the point of inflection, I get a turning point, which means in the second derivative, 
I get an x-intercept. Now exactly the same thing happens where a is negative. So what I suggest you do is I suggest you pause the video and just have a good look at the slide and see what's happening. What I've done is I've summarized it here in one graph and I've drawn it only with A being positive. Exactly the same thing applies when A is negative. So at a point of inflection, so where F has a point of inflection, the derivative has a turning point, the second derivative is zero. Where the graph is concave the derivative is increasing, the second derivative is positive. Where the graph is concave down, the derivative is decreasing, the second derivative is negative. Now you might again want to pause the video and write those down. In example number one, I've drawn a graph for you and I ask for what values of x is f of x firstly concave down and secondly concave up. So I want you to pause the video, I want you to try these and then we'll do them together. So where is the graph concave down? Remember concave down means I can draw the tangent line above the graph. So where is, the concave, where is the graph concave down? It's from that point where x is less than that. So when x is less than minus 5 over 6, where is it concave up? It's in that part of the graph. In other words, when x is greater than minus 5 over 6. Example number two, I want you to pause the video, I want you to try it, and then we'll do it together. This time I don't give you a graph, and I ask you for what values of x is f of x concave up. Now if you remember from earlier in the video, we said when a graph was concave up, the second derivative is positive. So the first thing I do is I get the derivative, I then get the second derivative. The graph is concave up when the second derivative is greater than zero. And I solve for x. Example number three. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this and then we'll do it together. So in this example, they tell you that the function has a point of inflection at 2, 4. Now remember, at a point of inflection, the second derivative is equal to 0. So what I do is I get the derivative. I then get the second derivative. Now at the point of inflection, x is 2. When x is 2 in the second derivative... I get an answer of zero, because at a point of inflection, the second derivative is zero. So in place of x in the second derivative goes 2, and that's equal to zero. And I solve for a. Now I also know with this point that on the original function f of x, when x is 2, y is 4. So what I do in the original function of f of x, in place of x goes 2, and in place of y goes 4, and I solve for b. You should now understand about concavity and the points of inflection. Thank you for watching this video. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.